trades ended right now, who would be on top in this in the championship? Stefana currently posted in the second, Santos in the second, fifth. And uh, it would give Bobby Santos a 22-point margin. But Kelly Stavitz missing our five bonus points for leading the most laps that Mike Stefanik begged for from Ron Silk. Tell us about it. Spencer first, would you have given him the advantage and let him get those five bonus points? Well, I always feel like that if, if you are owed a favor, you have to return it. If, if, if Mike Stefanik gave you an opportunity to do something, you, you have to return the favor. If not, then no, he doesn't have to. So all in all, you know, Steve, we've been in that position. It's up to the drivers and to do really you believe do that. what he's trying to tell us? Uh, actually, I do. I mean, you know, it, it's See? a lot of give and take. And, yep. you know, Ronnie Silk's in for the points, too. I mean, I think he's in the top five in points. And why give Stefanik five points when you're trying to beat him on a racetrack, too? Santos currently being shown in the fifth position. That is good enough right now, Jimmy, if it goes. And, you know, you're right. I mean, Bobby's definitely got it in good position. But you don't want Silk in his defense. This guy's got how many second place finishes, third place finishes this year? He has not won this year. So this is very important. And also, Stefanik hasn't won a race this year. These two guys don't want to go through this long winter without a win. On the inside of Bobby Santos, as you listen to his spot, where you see the speed escalating, almost ticking 126 miles an hour. He's Ted Christopher. Christopher gets by him. Christopher now moves into the sixth position, is moves into the fifth position, correct myself, and uh, he is on the hunt trying to work his way back to the front. He's got about 35 laps fresher tire, Stephen. You know, as a driver, we, we're, we love this. <laughs> you, you love having fresh tires, and, uh, you know, it just it gives you a psychological advantage, too, where you feel like your, your tires are better than the guys in front of you, so you seem like you're driving a little bit harder. I think here is Santos is still in decent shape. He, he's not got any lap trap to contend with right now. Running in sixth, he knows the guy he's really racing. Up, oh, Teddy, up high, something... Something looks like it, it broke on his car, but then he's back to, to it again. Teddy Christopher always running the high side up in turns one and two, and uh, had to pay dearly for that one as Ron Silk is moved into the second, in the first position. Mike Stefanik is second time, second and third. Give a call to Eric Goodale, running in the fourth spot, very solid. Now Bobby Santos and Teddy Christopher back and forth. Christopher gets by Santos, but Santos, he still wants to get in front of that red number 36. You know what's impressed me about Bobby Santos this year is he, he's just such a patient driver. I mean, you know, if he becomes a champion, he's a, he's a, he's a well-deserved well champion by being able to race smart and you know, we get it again. And Bobby Santos driving for the first full time on the circuit. He's run before. He's not a rookie, but this is the first full season that he's run. Will he win the championship? We'll find out. Here at the Thompson Speedway, getting down to what would be a typical short track Saturday night as we're inching closer and closer to 30 laps. Jack Aroot along with, well, I'm, I'm in great company. Two guys that know what how to get the job done here at Thompson and in the Modifies. Of course, Jimmy Spencer, Mr. Excitement, Steve Park. Stevie, going to see you back in one of these someday? Oh, boy, I, I love the Modified old. cars. He's, nah, he's not too old. I've actually raced behind this guy for many <laughs> years, and uh, I kind of grew up learning from guys like himself, my dad, and stuff like that. And uh, the Modifieds are some of the best racing that you see on Saturday nights at places like Thompson Speedway and Stafford Speedway up here in New England, and um, you can't beat it as, as we see out here on the racetrack. You told me a story that your dad at, what, 62, 63 years old, you finally made him park his modified Bob Park? Yeah, I can't tell him his exact age, but uh, but uh, he's he's given it up and, and, and took on some uh, street riding, so it's pretty good for me. Old habits die hard, especially when you've got the bug, Jimmy. Yeah, Steve, aren't you, uh, you're going to be driving in the truck series next year, Camping World Truck Series. Yeah, we are. We're, we're, we're hope, hopefully going to do uh, at least 10 races in the uh, in the uh, Cam World Truck Race. So, uh, you know, right now we're just really watching Teddy Christopher work his way to the front and uh, put on a 
heck of a show here at Thompson. He can't do that. <laughs> yeah, but give a call to the 52. Now, that car has already been to victory lane at the Lime Rock race after Todd Zegedy blew up late in the going. Dale Quarterly uh, put that one for Wayne Darling in victory lane. Kobe gets the call. Doug Kobe, by the way, guys, was the finalist for the B4 car, for the four car that Bobby Santos drives. And, Jimmy, the difference was once Bob Garbarino got a commitment from Bobby Santos, he said, that put me over the edge, and I selected Santos over Kobe. And when I talked to Bobby at, at Riverhead, and I said, Bob, what's the story, you know, with this kid, Santos? And he said, Jimmy, I, I said, if you're going to drive my car, I want a commitment at you. I want him to say, you're going to drive my car all year long. He gave Bob that commitment. Well, they are leading the points. Right? It's like Junior Johnson used to say, when you sit down to bacon and eggs, the pig was involved. I mean, the chicken was involved, the pig was committed, so all of a sudden, he made Bobby Santos become bacon. He is uh, trying to hold off Eric Beers right now in the 76, and that is a battle for the fifth position. No major change up front. you got to like what Ron Silk has done so far, but now the big question mark is he's got clear sailing, and what about Stefanik? Beers going to the inside, trying to challenge it. If you're Bobby Santos, you don't want to play it too close to the best beast, Stevie. No, you definitely don't, but I mean, you know, just, just look at what this modified tour is all about. I mean, the top four guys at points are racing in the top five here at Thompson, so I mean, it's pretty incredible to watch guys like Mike Stefanik uh, work his way up to the field and, uh, and, and running second right now, and uh, just, you know, what Ronnie Silk's been doing too is pretty impressive. Yeah, Silk will still end up finishing third, 22 points behind his Stefanik. Even if Stefanik could get by to move back into the first position, he has not led a lap yet, so he can get five points for leading the most laps. He has got to, Jimmy, I think, Stefanik's got to pick it up, and he's got to figure out a way to get around Kobe and Silk, and then go out there and get the five bonus points. Yeah, the big thing is here, I think Silk has not got the pace that he had, and we're seeing Kobe really use the bottom groove right here. I don't think Mike, as it looks right now, I don't think Mike's going to lead this race. Right now, it looks like favoritism showing to Kobe right now. I don't know. It's a four-car chop out about 135 miles an hour right now. Silk in the TS Haulers number six and giving him all that's worth in the Wayne Darling 52. Rim riding on the inside is Doug Kobe with Stefanik now looking to the outside trying to ride that little teeny draft on the high side to get into that second position and here comes DC. And you know what? This is great racing but you know Steve you know and I do. Look off of turn four. The key to this racetrack's always been to get your car straight off of four. That's what he did. That's how he passed right to Ron Silk right there. That that was always been critical with Thompson is to get that car under power and up off the street. Yeah, it's that forward bite. You know, if you can get the car to rotate through the center and get it and get the wheel straight, get all that forward bite up off, use all that big horsepower here in the NASCAR modifieds and, and get a good run down the front straight away. Silk started in the sixth position, and I talked to him before the race and Eddie Partridge and himself. And there was some question as to whether Ronnie Silk would be back in 2011 to drive for Eddie Partridge. And Partridge dispelled those rumors earlier this week. And based upon this performance, let's see if Teddy Christopher slipping and sliding down low. And there's a lap car straight ahead. Will Teddy Christopher use it as a pick? Teddy, Teddy saw what Kobe did. He finally makes the pass and wanted to. So finally. Teddy is here comes that bottom Stefanik, groove. And Stefanik sees the bottom groove now. He's going to try and get the best of Silk. They touch off of four. They're both keeping under control, though. But, you know, once again, these guys don't have as fresh tires. And we're seeing Kobe and the 36 of Teddy use these tires to their advantage. Yeah, they really are. And, and Teddy, you know, Teddy knew that when he pitted late for tires, that he had fresh tires when everybody started slipping and sliding around. And now that we get within the last 25 laps of this race, I think you're going to see tires in the And give a call to Doug Kobe, who is now your leader. This is his 100th career NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour race. Unfortunately, he really has not been successful in tying down a full-time ride. He's a winner of illustrious races like the Spring Sizzler, and no matter what he seems to strap himself in, he gets 125% out of that car. A Wayne Darling number 52 leads, and now, if you're Teddy Christopher, Jimmy Spencer, how do you close that two-second gap? I think what you got to do is see what he has done, and what Teddy's doing now is he's starting to utilize all the, the, the corner that he can use. So he's using less brake, trying to carry all the speed he can. He's running out of time with less than 22 laps to go. Teddy trying to get, which is unheard of, Steve, three wins in a row here in the fall final. 
I mean, I'm pulling for him because I think that's, I love to hear records being broken. Yeah, I mean, it's true. And, and the thing, too, is, you know, Teddy, in his mind right now, he knows that he has fresher tires, and he can push his car a little bit further and wear those tires a little bit down because we are getting into closing laps, and he's going to do everything he can to get some team car. So we're getting down to just a handful of laps. In fact, 20 laps to go in this one. 